Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech. And in this video, I'm going to go through a Bode plot analysis example. But before we do that, let's just review a couple things. So to make Bode plots, what we use is a loop transfer function, g l of s. And that comes from the characteristic equation of a closed loop transfer function written in this form. 1 plus k times g l s. And then we can extract out that loop transfer function. So what a Bode plot is, is the magnitude of GL evaluated at s equal j omega versus omega, and the phase of GL, j omega, versus omega. And what can we get from a Bode plot? Well, we can get gain crossover frequency, and from that, we can pick off the phase margin, and if the phase margin is positive, then we know that the closed loop system is stable for k equal 1. And we can also get the phase crossover frequency. That's where the phase plot crosses negative 180. And that gives us the gain margin. And that tells us how much the gain can change before the closed loop system will go unstable. We call these things relative stability criteria. And there's some things that we can do to relate that to the design process. For instance, as the phase margin goes up, in a sense the system becomes more stable. And so what that means is things like the percent overshoot would go down. We can also generate Bode plots of the closed loop transfer function. So let's say we had y over r, our closed loop transfer function, and we call that GCL. Then what often happens is the magnitude of the closed loop transfer function, if this is 0 dB, looks like this. It's 0 dB, maybe bumps up a little bit, and then rolls off. So what that tells you is that at low frequencies out here, your output is going to equal your input. So you're going to track that reference signal. If that reference signal was a sine wave of low frequency, then you would track it with 0 error. The frequency here we'll call omega bw, the closed loop bandwidth. And we define that frequency as being the point where the closed loop Bode plot is 3 dB below 0 dB, or in other words at negative 3 dB. So that means that for a sine wave input at this frequency, the output is going to be attenuated to the tune of about 0.7. And after that it rolls off more and more. So the output becomes further attenuated as the input frequency sine wave goes up, or as the frequency content of, of the input gets higher and higher. Now, the closed loop bandwidth is actually related back to the gain crossover frequency. It's roughly 1.4, maybe 1.5, it varies a little bit, of omega GC. The bottom line is the closed loop bandwidth is going to be greater than the gain crossover frequency, maybe 40 or 50 percent greater. Now what else do we know about Bode plots? Well, we know that if we increase k, so the Bode plot is, is for k equal 1, and as we increase k, it shifts the magnitude plot up. And if you decrease k, of course the magnitude plot comes down. And finally, we can relate the gain in decibels, let's call it x, to the physical gain through this definition of dB. And we can invert that also and say that if we knew this value in decibels, the gain in decibels, we could go back to the physical gain simply by raising 10 to the power x over 20. Now let's do an example where we analyze a system using Bode plots and also a little bit of root locus. And we'll do that in the sketchpad and then switch over to MATLAB and explore it in more detail. So here's our loop transfer function that we're going to play with for a bit here. s plus 1 squared over s cubed s plus 10. And this is our loop transfer function, so the characteristic equation that this corresponds to is 1 plus k times gl. And so this is s cubed s plus 10 plus k s plus 1 squared. 
Now let's have a little bit of fun with this. What we'll do is, is on the left side we'll make a crude root locus sketch, and on the right side we'll make a Bode plot, but just look at the low frequency and high frequency aspects of the Bode plot that we can get by inspection of that transfer function. So, let's do the root locus first. Uh, what do we know here? We have m, the number of zeros, is 2, and n, the number of poles, is 4. So that tells us we're going to have two asymptotes, and they will be at plus minus 90 degrees. So let's start sketching this thing. Let's see, we have three poles at the origin. We have a pole way out here at negative 10, or a k equals 0 point, really is what I should call these. And we have two zeros at uh, negative 1, and these are k equal infinity points. And I'll put a little right angle and a 2 there to indicate we have 2. Now the root locus and the real axis, um, I can see that we'll have some in here. And we will have root locus here. Great. Now we have our asymptotes. Uh, we can find our asymptote intersection with the real axis by looking at this. Let's denote that as sigma. And we pick up a 2 from here because when you multiply that out, you get s squared plus 2s plus 1. So you have 2 minus uh, 10 over n minus m, which is 2. So this is at negative 4. So we have an asymptote somewhere out here somewhere. I'll just sketch it in like so. And so let's take a guess at our root locus. It probably goes about like this, and maybe like this. This branch goes into here, and we have one more branch going into there. That should about do it. So what this says is that for k equals 0, we have a whole bunch of closed loop poles at the origin. As we increase k along here, the system is actually unstable until we pass up this point, and then the system is stable for very high values of k. Now let's look at the Bode plot, and we'll just look at um, the high and low frequency aspects of the Bode plot in both the magnitude and phase. I'm going to make this negative 180. Okay, so what do we have? Well, these three poles at the origin tell us that at low frequency, the magnitude plot is going to be going like that at, to the tune of negative 60 dB per decade. And the fact that there is um, two more poles than there are zeros, I know that at high frequency it's going to be going off like that to the tune of negative 40 dB per decade. That's about all I know. Then there's a lot of interesting things that probably happen in between if this is zero. Now for the phase plot, uh, let's see, what do I know? So S cubed tells me that at low frequencies I'm going to be at negative 90 times 3, because I have three poles at the origin, so negative 270. So I'll be about there. And at high frequency, I'll be at 4 minus 2, or 2, times negative 90, or negative 180. So I'll be over there. Let me switch colors, make this a little easier to see. So there's my low frequency and high frequency behaviors of the Bode plot. The reason for doing that is that when we put this in a MATLAB, we'll be able to check what we get in MATLAB against this. And that's just a good sanity check to make sure that we don't type something wrong in MATLAB. So with all of that, let's go to MATLAB. So here's our loop transfer function. I'll call it GL, and it's TF. I'll use the transfer function command 1, 2, 1 for the numerator, and 1, 10, 0, 0, 0 for the denominator. There it is. So now let's go to, oh, let's just use CISO tool. And voila. It defaults to showing me a root locus and a Bode plot. How convenient, considering that's what we just did by sketching by hand. So these red blocks are the k equals, zero, k equals 1 points on the root locus. And that's also what our Bode plot is telling us. So what do we have here? We have the system is unstable from looking at the root locus. If we look at the gain crossover frequency, which is right here, at 0.5 radians per second, our phase margin is negative 40 degrees roughly. It is unstable.
The gain margin is about 16 dB. That tells us that we need to increase the gain by 16 dB, or 10 to the 16 divided by 20, before the system will have poles on the imaginary axis. So let's do that by just grabbing hold of one of these and putting our poles right on the imaginary axis. So we have a gain of about 7 or so. And now the gain crossover frequency is 1.2 radians per second. And the phase crossover frequency, which is here, is also roughly 1.2. And that's what happens when you have poles on the imaginary axis. The gain crossover and the phase crossover frequency are equal. And that's where we're at right now. I'm a little bit off. We can see that with the little brown dots, but close enough. So now let's go ahead and increase our gain a little bit more. I'm going to go up to, oh, maybe, how about we'll go for a phase margin of, that looks good, 21 degrees. So now we have a phase margin of 21. The system is stable. We're away from the imaginary axis by, to the tune of about 6.8 dB. This is now telling us that if I decrease k, or the gain, by 6.8 dB, I'll go back to being on the imaginary axis. Now this is a fairly low phase margin. And what else do we know? Let's see, our gain crossover frequency is about 1.8 radians per second. That's right here. So the closed loop bandwidth should be a little bit larger than that. So let's take a look at that. If I go over to Analysis, and I select Closed Loop Bode, I get this. And this is exactly the type of Bode plot I sketched a few minutes ago. It's 0 dB. Remember, this is the closed loop. It jumps up like this. This is called the resonant frequency. And then it crosses 0 dB here. And if I move this out until my magnitude is about negative 3 dB, which is about there, the frequency is 3 radians per second. That's my closed loop bandwidth. And what we would estimate that from by looking at this gain crossover frequency of 1.8 radians per second. So take 1.8, multiply it by 1.5, you get, eh, you're getting close to 3. The bottom line is, is that that closed loop bandwidth is going to be greater than the gain crossover frequency and not that far away from it. Now, let's look at one more thing. Let's go ahead and look at the step response. So our phase margin is about 21 degrees. It's a fairly low phase margin. You can see here that we have a percent overshoot of, oh, maybe 65%. Now, if I increase the gain to where we have maximum phase margin, we now have 40, almost 41 degrees of phase margin. It's right at that peak. Of course, the phase margin is the distance above negative 180. Our gain crossover frequency is now 5 radians per second. So the bandwidth is probably around maybe 7, 8, 9 radians per second, much faster than it was earlier. And look at this step response. It's much faster than what we had at the, the previous point, where we had 21 degrees of phase margin. And the percent overshoot is much less, maybe 40%. Now, as we increase the gain more, and let's increase it such that we get about 21 degrees of phase margin again, but on the other side of that peak. Let's see if I can do it. And that's probably about as close as I'm going to get. Now the gain crossover frequency is way out here at 21, roughly, radians per second. Much faster than it was before. So the closed loop bandwidth is probably going to be 30, 40 plus radians per second. Let's look at that. If I go to Plot Types and pick Bode, now here is the closed loop Bode plot, and I'll find the 3 dB down point right about 
there. And there we are at a frequency of about you know, roughly 30, 30 radians per second. Again, estimated from the Bode plot of the loop transfer function and its gain crossover frequency. Great stuff. Now if I right click on here and I switch back to the step response, very fast compared to where we started from. We're back up to a large overshoot, maybe 60%, similar to what we had when we had 21 degrees of phase margin on the other side of this bubble. Just as a reminder, what we can do is drag this back to there, and there's the percent overshoot again, roughly 60-some percent. Now finally, what else? Now finally, what we can also see from this Bode plot is I can increase the gain as much as I'd like, and the system will always be stable in theory. That is, that the phase margin will always be positive. Now it gets mighty small as I increase k. We can see that if we increase k out to here, my phase margin is very tiny. Look what happens to the step response. The closed loop poles have very little damping at this point. And thus, we get a step response that is very lightly damped. So to summarize, we started off by reviewing basic Bode plot analysis features, and then went into sketching a particular example, both looking at it in the root locus and the Bode plot simultaneously. Very crude sketching information was obtained from that. And then, of course, we went into MATLAB and saw the exact same thing with much more detail and played around with increasing and decreasing the gain, seeing how that affected the phase margin and the gain crossover frequency, and how that related to the closed loop bandwidth and the step response. So again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.